Hi Virgo, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will go from December 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing to the channel. It means a lot. Helps grow the channel. Make sure to click that like button. I've already pulled cards for this week. It is a general reading, so it will not resonate with every Virgo. But if it does resonate with you, like, share, comment. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, Virgo, how you come into the week? Ace of Swords. That is, that's the Virgo. <laughs> the advice is a seven of wands. Okay. The outcome is the Ace of Pentacles. Very, very nice. Okay. So there's been some love situation where there's a connection here, but someone hasn't fully committed to it. You know they haven't fully committed to you or you them whatever it may be there's not full on commitment attention to this particular person relationship or whatever it may be um it looks like Virgo's gonna come into the week demanding clarity um stating their position and where they are and how they feel about this relationship this is a challenge for Virgo to do because they don't want to be confrontational but at the same time um, they know that newness has to be the only way they can get change is by stating their position stating their claim and this may be that communication that says hey are we doing this or are we not if we're not then you know xyz so it's almost it's a double-edged sword it's defining how virgo feels what they think and what they know putting it on the table and allowing allowing for whatever is to happen is going to happen here Virgo is telling you, you might be, it looks like you're on the brink to getting what you want. Choose your battles wisely. Everything isn't a fight, isn't an argument. You cannot have it your way completely. But defend your position. The position that you're taking at the top of the week. But maybe the beginning of the week. Or just this week because it looks like the outcome is you guys get to rebuild or reestablish in a more sure foundation a firm foundation here it's not um you're going to get exactly what you want you're going to get someone who's serious about maybe the start of the relationship moving closer to you doing better in regards to keeping up with you keeping the relationship alive speaking to you every day or whatever the gripe may be because this talks about habits you're, you're tired of someone habitually picking you up when they want to putting you down when they want to juggling you or someone is tired of you doing that Virgo so it looks like once you state your claim your position you may get the opportunity to restart but don't go overboard with the ace of swords just wait for the opportunity to have newness let's see what this is about yeah closure yeah maybe closure to a love affair to not getting what you want great body someone may try to divert the conversation into giving you compliments being seductive um you know evading or being invasive yeah evading or the root of the matter but it says virgo stand your ground and defend how you believe and what you believe okay um then we have divorce you could be saying you don't want a divorce or or if we can't get it together we can't figure this out then we need to divorce you're putting something on the table you may be laying something out too like we have two options either work on it or or divorce and be done with it 
some of you are going to get the opportunity to reestablish the connection. Do keep in mind this is the Ace of Pentacles, so that's the beginning. But it looks like you start on a really, you know, a better foundation here. But this isn't this isn't indicative of the outcome. This is just the start. But if you're looking for the opportunity, it can very well be had. The sevens talk about relationships, business partnership, marriage, uh, interpersonal uh, feelings and how you come off to others. It talks about sharing. You share how you feel. Someone may be saying we need to close this out because I was in this for superficial reason. Someone may even be saying you used to have a really nice body, really great body, but now you don't. That could be taking a toll in the, the breakdown of the situation or the marriage. This week is interesting. You have the opportunity to either reestablish yourself by by yourself with this divorce card here. You have the opportunity to reestablish the connection. We're going to rework this. Re, you know, do it over. See that we can come together in a peaceable manner or a more solid, stable ground. Deal with root issues in the relationship. Or someone is saying we need to we need to separate, we need to be single. Okay. Virgo, I hope the best for you. I'm praying the best for you. Um all links are below if you feel like you want to take advantage of a personal reading. Coupon codes are below. Also, stay tuned for the real corner with L or real world advice. I'm gonna name it something a little bit more formal, but uh, stay tuned for the next segment of this reading, okay? Virgo, um, ha happy holidays. Um, continue to stay in prayer. Bye. Hello, everyone. So today on L's Real Corner. All right. So today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men. You can pertain this to women too, but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos, uh subscribing to the channel the men so i apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex just apply it to your life right okay all right so emotionally unavailable men women cat dog whatever are basically non-committal okay though these are non-committal people these are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you uh with anything or with anybody it, it might spill over into every facet of their life we're talking about more so relationships romantic relationships um so that's that's what we have here not they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people they could be married uh in love with another or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit um and which hence they are emotional emotionally unavailable so when we look at when we dissect this this term here we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable the mind wants to rationalize that that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that no 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because you know they tell me how much they like me they compliment me they touch me we have sex blah 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 so you rationalize and you say they're not emotionally unavailable they are whatever you want to deem them in, as but emotionally unavailable what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is 
it's a relationship. It's I put in and then I'm going to receive out. It is, um, it is equal in a sense, suppo supposedly, you know, um, it is a relationship. It, it could be if, an if then relationship. If I do this, then I'll get this, this type of person, the emotionally unavailable person is not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me. Well, let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are. They're complimentary. They're seductive. You know, so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look, well, that is a key factor of an unavailable it emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything okay because they are void of they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason we've got some reasons here could be more uh to invest emotionally Okay, so you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes. So let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine. So if they tell you that we're meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my turn my terms, my routine, and their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days, maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they, they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No. They're not into that. There's no um investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay? So this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life, no real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah, uh, contentment. Yeah, in this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more and more and more, better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within 
your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are what you want and then you can start to actually answer some of these questions like what is my end game right okay so anyway moving right along you say um i said what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment. You want this person, this non-committal person, to commit. Okay, so you're asking for something. Um, you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving. Or maybe they don't even know how to give, right? So you're trying to get water from the rock. Okay, granted. It can happen. It can happen, but I do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation, an emotionally unavailable person. This is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that, that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just it's not a situation that you just say, okay, I want commitment, and you tell the person and they say, Great. I've been non-committal all this time and you've come along and asked me for a commitment and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay? Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another. How will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. Be Here's the tarot for you, the page of swords. Be inquisitive, be curious, be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person, learn your person. This is if you want commitment. Learn this person so you know what you're dealing with. You know who you're dealing with. The most, I say this every single time, or I ask the question every time I, I do a reading, a personal reading. The, the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this? And how do they feel about this? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth. Expecting, uh... The asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lie. You say, oh, yeah, I've been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years well we know that that is not the truth you we both go on about our lives you find out that i've only been doing youtube videos for two years uh well three years and then you say you come back to me you say well i i asked you the question how long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I have, you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along. You want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with 
within their own life, okay? So you you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman will probably most likely elude or, or move toward, toward evasiveness. You start asking questions. It's no more surface level. You're trying to go deep. You know, um, you may say, well, I only see you on Wednesday and Friday. What are you doing, you know, the other days of the week? Or I know you see you work, blah, blah, blah. But um, maybe we can get together on one of those other days. If they start to be evasive, then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games. They give you just a little bit or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to to being surface dwellers. So you know that, okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavail you know, emotionally unavailable person. All right? Because they become the seven of swords. Now, at this point, you can deal with this shit, I wouldn't. Um, if you want to continue to deal with this, state your claim. Be the ace of swords. Stating your claim is, I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom, outside of doing something like going to dinner or um drinks i just i want to really spend more time with you around you because i would like to get to know you all right they're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid the rigidness of their routine right so um in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be. This is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay. Create the boundaries. Blockage. Now, you, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you. Uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but, but do understand that good news and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just, you're just waiting. And you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. 
you are emotionally available. This person isn't. You've stated your claim. You've created the boundaries. And now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around. Or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They, they still come back around being evasive, seductive. You know, the same old thing. Then you might need to... Uh, this is why the, I put the world here. You Now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? you. Some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. That is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is. Hence, that's the operative word. It can be done. You're going to have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson. Walk away. A person can institute these types, this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own. And there's no trauma. Um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this, and, you're, and you can walk away. Be able to walk away. Um, emotionally um, stable, balanced people who have gone through, who have learned the lesson, are able to walk away. Uh, we're at 19 minutes. Shit. So you need to be able to, to walk away. Um, if you, if the result is this person is coming back and being the same and some of you, you'll get a turnaround. You'll get the person coming back and, um, giving you exactly what you want. Still the world. Now you're going to the next chapter because you, you now know how to deal with, with situations you can readily identify. Also with me writing the tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business, or family, or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do? Um, in regards to dealing with this guy and you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more cu curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know him. You do need to do the investigative work. The page of swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the king of swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So... We have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing. It talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for, for anybody. Um, share this video, okay? Thank you, guys. Take care, guys.